Howdy, howdy. How are you? It's good to see you on my side of the mountain. I'm Chris Moore of Chrissy's Over the Mountain Crochet and Crafts. And you may have already covered your storage cube cover with fabric. I have a video. The links will be down below. But what this is, in case you're new, is these little storage cubes you can get from Walmart, Family Dollar, just out and about. You can cover them with fabric and create a beautiful product and then Today, I'm going to show you how to embellish with these fabric patches that have been fused and have fleece on them, and then we will glue them on. I have a button for some interest. We'll get to that in a minute. Let me quickly, just quickly, go over how to measure your storage cube just really fast. You'll, any box or any storage cube you measure three inches in, go all the way around, three inches down, do it for both sides. For this storage cube, ten and a half inches wide, I got this one at Walmart, you will need a 16 inch wide by 38 inch long piece of fabric. You will need two of them. And the video below will show you how to work with plaids and how to get that to match. So let's get on to the embellishments and how to make these fussy cut appliques. This one is cute. These are just sitting on here because it's flannel. Now, if I had a cotton fabric, it would not just sit like that. But um, I arranged these with some ladies in one of my live chats on Facebook. I'll get those all straightened up. Uh, but we had a good time doing that. I'm going to run a piece of flannel through this button and glue it on. And then maybe add another little button just for interest. So here's how you make the appliques. This fabric I fell in love with is cute. It has a lot of nice little motifs, really cute. I'm going to be giving this as a baby gift, so this pertains to how the mother has decorated the home. So the first step is a roll of heat and bond light. Heat and bond light has glue on one side and paper on the other side and you cut out your fabric that you want to have fused or that you think you're going to fussy cut. You cut out your fabric, then you cut the heat and bond light maybe a half an inch smaller than the piece of fabric that you have. Let me see if I got this one right or not. I might not be laying this in the right manner because I should have already cut. Yes, this is good. Well, I have a little corner there that's going to create trouble. The reason why I don't want this um, I want this to be away from the edge is that I don't want the glue to seep when I iron this on. Let me take this to the ironing board. Heat and Bond Light is a wonderful product. I bought a, I bought, it's not that expensive when you consider how long it will last. It will last a very long time. So, you put paper side down, fabric side up, you iron it with no steam. Let me get it started. It's wanting to roll on me. Get it started. There we go. And I'll be back with y'all in a moment. So this has been fused to the, to the heat and bond light, it still has the paper attached. Now we need to take the paper off. Let's do that. It's very easy. Peeling it off. Get it all started here. And you can see there's glue left behind. There's a residue of glue left behind on this fabric. There we go. Throw that away. That's just paper. But there is glue all on the back of this fabric. Now what the next step is, is another iron. We need to iron again onto a piece or scrap of sewable fleece. This sewable fleece, um, you can get a generic brand. They don't work as well as the name brands. The name brands are Pellon, but this is something that you um, use to put inside of a, a purse or to make placemats with. It's just 
something that will give a little density and you can quilt with it but it's not going to be like quilting with batting but anyway I've cut a piece that will hopefully be big enough for this piece of fabric and yes it is I'll smooth it out and I will take this to the iron and I will iron this onto the fusible fleece no steam but I suggest placing a cover over top of this to iron it as you can really melt this pellon easily. So let me get started on that. I need to go grab my pressing cloth. I'll be back with you in a minute. I'm back with the fabric that has been fused to the fleece. Now it's time to cut it out, cut out what little fussy piece we want to cut. I think I want to cut, uh, I think I want to cut this fussy piece out. It says wild and free and has a deer on it. Let me cut that out and show you. I'm going to go beyond the piece about a quarter to three eighths of an inch, more like three eighths of an inch. There's a reason for that. I'm only demonstrating one applique. There is a reason for that, and the reason is there is a technique, there is a cutting technique that I need to show you. Let me see if I can sh get close enough to the camera to show you. But the, normally with scissors, you would cut straight up and down. This, you want to cant your scissors. I'm going to want to have a clean edge right along there, but I'm going to cant my scissors. That helps cut away some of the bulk on the, uh, of the fleece from the underneath side, but yet it gives a really nice treatment that way when folks see the applique, they're not seeing all the, um, all of the fleece sticking out on the back side. Let me get it started and show you, and then we'll move on. Can you, can you see how I am canting my scissors? Let me hold this straight so you can see that I'm canting the scissors. There we go. Let me snip that off. And I don't know if you can tell or not, but that gives it a beveled edge. I'll try to get a good picture of that for you. All right, let's move on. So I'll be working from this side of the table so that I can show you uh, a little bit easier on how to glue this down instead of being so far away. Want to go over this really quick again. You can fussy cut, go a good um, three eighths to a quarter of an inch around, and then bevel your scissor, um, cant your scissors, cant the scissors so that um, the fleece is beveled. I don't know if you can tell, but that is beveled. All right, so let's work on gluing these pieces on. I've placed my pieces in a, in a manner that is pleasing for me. You may only want one applique in the very center, and that would be just fine. But I like this collage of appliques. So I'm going to make a mental note. I'm going to glue this one on first, but I'm making a mental note that I, it will be on that edge and this upper edge. Right? Is that right? No. Just below the white line right beside that white line but it's it takes glue it does you don't be shy about adding the glue to the patch here's how I do it I lay it down and I add lots of glue I go around the outside edge go around that outside edge then I glue the dickens to it in the middle can you see how I'm doing that? Let me push that up out of the way. Let me pick it up so you can see. I have a generous amount of glue on this little patch. Now I'm going to grab a couple of the corners where they don't have glue and I'm going to remember my marks, place it up there, and give it a good press. That's all there is to it. Give it a good press. Hold it for a few minutes. Make sure it adheres very well. There's lots of surface for it to adhere. I mean, after all, it kind of hangs on there anyway. 
So, and if after you the glue has settled, you have a little corner maybe that's peeking out, you can just dab a little bit of glue on that. Now, I, ca I want to caution you when you're putting glue around flannel, it um, is not forgiving. If you get glue on the outside edge, it's going to look bad. So, just be very careful how you... Um, how you apply the glue, apply the glue all the way around the outside edge, leaving about a quarter of an inch so that you can grab with just your fingertips all the way around the outside edge and then fill in the middle. All right, now let's move on to the button. I think that's going to be such a cute treatment. I want to show you that. Now I have this wooden button that I want to I um, glue right there on the corner and then I may want to glue an arrangement of little but wooden buttons maybe one right here and a really small one right there not sure yet but I want to run a piece of this flannel through the button bring it out and have it frayed and fussy and you know tie it on in a knot on the top and just make it look cute but I need to decide what part of the flannel that I want to be exposed do I want it to be the dark portion do I want it to be a light portion I think I'm going to go for the dark because the button is light anyway so I only cut a very and I use fabric scissors I was using paper scissors earlier on the heat and bond light I cut just a very small maybe eighth to a quarter of an inch strip That ought to be good enough. If not, I can do it again. All right. And I have a large needle. I have a needle that has a large eye in it. Let me see if I can get that close to you so you can see. It has a large eye in it. All right, so I'm going to run the fabric right through that needle. Super simple. Look, it went right through that needle. Now, going to use go up I'm going to pull this through the button I'm going to go up nope did that wrong I'm going to go down I want the tail to hang out on the outside and as you're pulling it through the buttonhole it's gonna kind of get frayed up a little bit down and leave a tail ah oh, that looks like it's about two and a half inches and come back up through no, you don't come up through opposite. You come up through beside the hole. Sorry, I'm remembering this as I'm doing it. I'm going to want to turn the flannel. Make sure the flannel is turned so it's exposed. So I came up. I'm going to flip that flannel so that it's out toward the outside. There we go. Did you see that? I flipped the flannel so it's out toward the outside. I came, I went down in that hole I came up in this hole. I'm going to go across and go down in this hole. Yep, it still looks, still flipped on me. And now I'm going to come back up in this hole. I'm going to take my needle out. I've got plenty of fabric here. I'm going to tie a knot. I'm just going to mess with this and make it look pretty. I'm going to tie a knot. Just a square knot. Let me lay it down so I can tie a square knot. I want the fabric to... Yeah, there we go. Really, that's all you need. Cut your ends off. Oh, I like the way that looks. I'm going to mess with it, just kind of make it look kind of messed with and old. I might want to cut those a little shorter. About the length of the button. That's what it, the width of the button. A little past the width of the button. There we go. Just kind of mess with it a little bit. Now I'm going to glue that. Well, I just pulled on it and messed it up. going to glue that right there. I want it to look fussy, messy. All right, let me get some glue and I'll glue that on. I'm going to glue 
put a lot of hot glue right there. I'm going to put a lot of hot glue right there, and I'll be right back. Lots of glue on that button. And I'm going to put it in the corner. I want my danglies to be down, so I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to hold it. And there we go. How about that? Now, how exciting is that? Now, glue the rest of your um, patches on. And we'll let me do that for you, and I'll be right back. I've decided that I would like to add extra buttons for the decoration and so I'm using scotch tape to hold them in place to see if that's what I want to do. Do I want to add these extra buttons? Do I want to take them off? This is a temporary fix that gives you an idea of how things will look. I think I might scatter a couple of buttons, maybe a triangle of buttons right here. I'm not sure. I just may go a straight line across. I don't know. But I know I will be scotch taping my buttons in place and then deciding how I want them. And then I will hot glue these to the box. I'll be back. And we are done. Isn't that beautiful? I love this little box. It's going to make a beautiful gift for that new baby in their room. We have two more steps. They're quick, they won't take long, but I suggest taking E6000 and sticking a little bit of it underneath all of those buttons. The second one is a bottle of Fray Check. You might wanna take and put a little bit of Fray Check around all of the appliques not necessary. I've made um, these basket covers for my daughter and I did a, a cut out of a moose. It's really cute. I'll have that out on another, on another video and uh, made the applique of the moose and I don't, I didn't put fray check on it and it's just fine. And if it frays a little bit, it just adds to the character of the box. But this is just beautiful. I've also crocheted three little beanies for the baby and I took some of the flannel from the uh, some of the plaid flannel and made a little fabric patch and sewed a button on and I fused that fabric piece of fabric I frayed it and I fused it and I uh, fused it on to heat and bond light then I fused it on to the fleece this one's my favorite and then I folded it in half. It was a one and a half inch by three inch long strip. Folded it in half and sewed the button on. It just made for a beautiful treatment. I'll add a few more things into the box and I have a nice gift box for a new baby. Well, it was good to have you on my side of the mountain. I will have the pattern for these hats. They're three different sizes. You know, babies are babies are this was a good size baby so I wasn't sure what size so this is the largest this is medium and this is small and I will get those patterns up on my website it was good to have you on my side of the mountain I hope you'll come again soon bye